What up, guys? This is Kibo Guys. Back here again with another video. Today, I got some gameplay for you guys of Tamarin. This game just launched for PlayStation and PC via Steam on September 10th, and it's coming out later for Xbox One. This game was developed and published by Chameleon Games. I was actually really excited when I'd seen the trailer for this game, mostly because I'm a huge Rare fan, and these devs in Chameleon Games come from the original Rare team that made Jet Force Gemini. So basically they're saying that this game is supposed to be like a spiritual successor to Jet Force Gemini. Definitely has some Jet Force Gemini vibes. Let's go ahead and dive into the intro. Well, that went from optimistic to depressing real quick. So it looks like we're this little tamarind monkey and our village or home, whatever you want to call it, just got burnt down and we lost all of our family and friends. I also want to point out that I think I had some FPS hiccups during the recording of that cutscene with my capture card, so sorry about that. That was not part of the game. That's totally on me and my capture card. Anyhow guys, as I mentioned before, I'm a big Jet Force Gemini fan, so I was really excited to dive into this game. That's why I decided to go ahead and play it on PlayStation before it comes out on Xbox. Now in this video, we're going to be going through the first level. It's going to take about 25 minutes or so, so hopefully you guys enjoy the first 25 minutes of Tamarin. Jet Force Gemini is definitely one of those games that I wish just got a little more respect. A lot of people don't talk about it or mention it when it comes to Rare, but personally it's actually one of my favorite Rare titles from the Nintendo 64. I actually beat the whole game on the Rare Replay collection. Unfortunately, it didn't get its full 1000 gamer score or anything like that. It only had a few achievements related to Jet Force Gemini, but I still enjoyed playing the port on the Rare Replay collection. Alright, so it appears that I collected some sort of firefly. Let's see. Okay, so we can use this firefly to open up this door. Interesting. There we go. First achievement, open sesame. That's what I'm talking about. Unlocking them trophies. Let's see here. I'm ready to destroy some ants. I want some bug battles like Jet Force Gemini. I think that's what gives us the Jet Force Gemini vibes is the whole, you know, fact that we're shooting ants and, you know, fighting big insects. We'll see how the controls work in terms of the shooting in camera angles. That's when I'll really be able to judge whether it's similar to Jet Force Gemini. Anyway, let's see what this NPC has to say. Don't be startled. I survived because I hid down here, utterly frightened and all spiked up. I'm on your side. Are you okay? So sad. Your family taken away. With the forest burnt down and your house demolished, it can't get any bleaker, can it? Indeed, the forests have come full of armed, brutal insects. They're building factories, expanding, and polluting. So bad, I'll just pop back down here until the world ends, if that's alright with you. Ah, uh, sorry. We're in this together, distressed furry friend. Let me give you a warm hedge hug. Everything will be alright. Well, we can't run into heavily guarded forests like sobbing little monkeys, can we? Take this. Oh snap, that hedgehog just gave me an Uzi. Who would have known he was packing like that? I gotta say, this is taking a dark turn pretty quickly. All of a sudden, we're a little monkey with the Uzi. Let's see if the aiming is anything like Jet Force Gemini. 
it says, do you see that switch over there? Try locking onto it and shoot it to open the door. All right, so it says that we have to lock onto it with L2 and we have to shoot with R2. So it appears that we do have a lock on mechanic, which is good. Again, similar to Jet Force Gemini. And let's see, that should open the door. There we go. I'm ready to blast some ants now, guys. I don't know about you. Jet Force Gemini was all about killing insects. Here we go. It is about to go down. Here is where the Jet Force Gemini vibes start going down. Liberate this once peaceful land from the army of invading insects. Sap crystals are loaded with energy. They will help you survive. Beware of the drones in occupied territory. Infesting the forest, they roam in groups. All right, watch out for these enemies above you. Take them out using lock targeting. Do not run low on ammunition. Well, that one's pretty obvious. Use checkpoints to save your progress. Okay, interesting. So there might not be any autosave feature. On your travels through the forests and mountains, you will find birds in peril. Take them with you to safety. Okay, interesting. So kind of like saving the Jinjis in Banjo-Kazooie. I wonder if the ants will try to kill the birds before we save them. If so, that's going to make it a lot harder to make sure that we collect all of the birds in each level. Alright. I gotta admit the aiming is a little iffy, but it is trying to emulate the janky controls of the N64, so it definitely isn't your modern third person shooter um, style of aiming. This is more N64 style. So if you notice my aiming is really bad, that's because it only lets you aim with one of the sticks. Other than that, you have to rely on your auto lock. Now, as of right now, I only plan on uploading this gameplay video, but if you guys are interested in trophy and eventually achievement guides for this game, let me know down in the comments so I can make some. Looks like we just got the license to kill trophy. That is for getting five ant headshots in a row. You can really tell that a lot of people miss the old school style of rare platforming just because you know you're getting a lot of spiritual success for these days like the most prominent one i think would be ukulele i'm referring to the first one the 3d platformer developed by playtonic they did a really good job of making a spiritual successor to banjo kazooie but they are former rare developers and now it looks like we got a second developer filled with X rare employees, except this group of rare employees seem to have worked on Jet Force Gemini and not Banjo Kazooie. Although I'm sure there are employees that maybe dabbled in on both games back in the day. I am not 100% sure on the specific employees involved. I'd have to do some research to see which former rare devs are a part of this project, but I do know a few are. I also want to mention that if you're an Xbox fan watching this video, this game is eventually going to be released on Xbox, it's just a timed exclusive for PlayStation. Which I gotta say is a little disappointing considering a lot of the big rare fans have Xboxes because, you know, Microsoft purchased Rare. Now it's starting to appear like we have a lot of different pathways inside of this tunnel, so Forgive me if I backtrack a little bit. I do have to figure out my way through this level, so we're going to be doing that together. But first, I'm going to go ahead and clear out this room. I wonder if ants and beetles are the only types of enemies in this game. Hopefully, it mixes it up with a variety of enemies. But then again, if you are going for those Jet Force Gemini vibes, including a bunch of ant enemies is super important. Now it looks like those ants took out about half of my life bar, so I only have 5 HP left out of 10. However, you can find these orbs located around the game that will increase your overall health capacity. They look like these right here. It foreshadowed this in the beginning of the game. See, it says health capacity increased. Now I have 11 HP rather than 10. I want to say we have an achievement or trophy related to finding all of the health capacity increases. And then we also have an achievement related to finding and rescuing all of the birds in each of the levels. Now I think I know where I'm going. I have to go up here and I'm pretty sure I haven't been in here yet. Yep, there's a mine and I only can get hit one more time before I die so I'm going to have to play it safe right here. I'm not too sure what happens if you die in this game but I know that I don't think there's any auto saving so hopefully um, the checkpoints are a bit forgiving and I don't need to start all the way over. But who knows, maybe I won't die. Actually, let's have some confidence. I'm not going to die. I'm going to make it through this whole level. You guys will see. 
Alright. Ah, uh, man, I'm getting so lucky right now. Good thing for lock on aiming. I gotta watch out for those mines, though. If I hit another one of those mines, I'm gonna get wiped out. Now, in the beginning of the game, I was able to roll, but now that I have a pistol in my hand, or forgive me, an Uzi in my hand, it doesn't appear I can roll anymore. And I'm not too sure that I can put away my weapon, so. Anyway, let's see here. So, it appears that all of these bugs or flies are guarding this door. Not too sure what happens if I try to go past them. They'll probably attack me. Okay, so actually it looks like to open that door, it required that I shot all of those uh, flies, insects, whatever you want to call them. I'm not too sure which type of insects those little things were. Maybe beetles? Anyway, there was two different pathways that I could have went right now. I think I'm just going to go this way for now, and then I'll go back to the other one. But first, I'm going to shoot these mines because I don't want to get damaged uh, running over them. Last time, it took a ton of damage uh, when I hit one of those. So let's see. I don't know. I don't think it lets me lock onto the mines, which is weird. Oh, man, that one was kind of sneaky. I almost ran into that one. All right, before I go into that door, I'm going to go back and check that other pathway real quick. Just because I like, you know, being a completionist. I want to make sure I don't miss anything. I don't want to, you know, miss any corners, any pathways, anything like that. So let's see what we have here. All right, some more enemies. I'm glad I came over here. And I'm especially glad I came over here because there's a little birdie right here. Oh my gosh, he just shot my bird. It looks like two of the birds are dead. What happened, man? I, I didn't even see the first one die. Two birds down? That sucks. So they can kill the birds. They're basically little hostages. It's going to be pretty hard to get those achievements or trophies for saving all of those birds. Because not only do you need to find them to collect them, but you have to make sure that the hostage birdies don't get shot. Oh well, we lost some little birdies in action. I'm just going to save the ones that I can, and we're going to try to make our way through this first level. This isn't necessarily a 100% uh, guide on the first level, just showing you guys some gameplay. And I'm not too sure how to save this guy. It's not letting me break the cage or anything like that. Maybe you have to progress farther in the game to unlock a power to be able to knock him down or something like that. Again, not too sure. Um, I would have to maybe, you know, keep playing this game a lot to figure it out or do some research. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and proceed with this level. Again, I'm not trying to save all of the birds in this level because two of them have already died, so I've already failed that objective. With that being said, though, I'm not necessarily going to speedrun the rest of this level. I want to make sure that I look everywhere and do my due diligence to try to save as many of these little birds as I can. I wish it would show how many there are total in the level, so I knew how many I have out of how many, like maybe 4 out of 12 or however many there are in this level. Anyway, I've gotten 4 and I think 2 have died, so 6 so far in this level. And yo, I also want to take a moment to say um, these 25 minute, 30 minute gameplay videos with commentary do take a lot of time to voice over and get prepared and edit, so if you enjoy videos like this, then let me know down in the comments and maybe just say I enjoy gameplay videos because as most of you know my channel is focused on achievement guides and walkthroughs and the gameplay videos are far and few between. Personally I was just really excited about this game because again I'm a huge Rare fan and this is a spiritual successor to Jet Force Gemini, one of my favorite games from the N64 era so I definitely had to make sure I covered this game. Even though it's only out at PlayStation at first, again, it is eventually coming to Xbox. And when it does get released on Xbox, I'll make sure to release some achievements and trophy guides for this one. But while the PlayStation version is only out, I think I'm just going to pass on the achievement guides and walkthroughs for now, just because there's a lot of good games out at the moment. However, I gotta say, I really wish I had more time in a day because if I did, this is definitely the type of game that I would spend more time playing and maybe try to complete the whole thing. Sadly, there's just, you know, only 24 hours in the day and time is pretty limited right now. Plus, I have no idea how long this game is. If anybody knows how long the game is, let me know down in the comments below. 
um, I'm hoping that maybe it's about you know four to six hours I think that would be a good length for a game like this maybe you know anywhere from like three to six levels depending on the length of these levels I think this first level is about 25 minutes long so at that length I'd say the game needs to be about six levels long at minimum to be you know a pretty decent platformer now it appears that we've progressed to some sort of boss battle with this beetle he has a rocket launcher and I'm assuming it takes a ton of damage so I'm kind of just going back and forth hiding behind these walls maybe shooting once or twice during my openings like right there so just shooting and then hiding shooting and then hiding I'm not too sure how much success I would have if I moved forward and tried to get closer but this method appears to be working well this beetle is actually taking quite a lot of damage okay there we go and we got a trophy Beetlejuice properly named I'd have to say only a bronze trophy though all right and I had to aim and shoot that one and it looks like one of those gates in that courtyard that we were just in open so we're gonna go back over there and see what's inside of this gate I really really wish that Microsoft would take advantage of some of the IPs that they own after purchasing rare for instance Jet Force Gemini a modern day Jet Force Gemini game would be so awesome I actually have the original Jet Force Gemini right here in my nightstand I only have five N64 cartridges and that is one of them and for those that don't know Jet Force Gemini is actually a pretty long game for an N64 game that game is actually about 22 hours long it's crazy now let's see what he has to say who would have thought little Emperor Tamarin your meekness is no weakness you just never give up but it's a dangerous forest that's what it is and I sure would like to beef you up would it be possible to ask for a favor this time I collect things little red things just a few insect tokens if that's all right with you a machine gun what do you say man I'm down hedgehog you gave me a Uzi and a machine gun that's pretty savage for a little monkey now I'm not too sure what the difference is in the game between a Uzi and a machine gun but I guess we'll find out he says let's do this let's save your family all right it says saving games so it actually does have an auto save feature I really didn't think it did so that's good they didn't necessarily try to emulate the save system in the Nintendo 64 that really would have sucked just because the saving in Jet Force Gemini was not that good either in the emulated version in the rare replay one it's not that bad because I think you could save at any time but in the N64 version I do remember losing a lot of progress now this is going to be the first time I'm gonna edit through this footage and that's just because I wanted to come back into this cave to see if I could save this little birdie with the machine gun and it wasn't so successful it turns out the machine gun can actually activate the red switches you just have to lock onto the red switch and keep shooting it until it opens so it all makes sense now I wasn't able to go into that gate until I talked to the hedgehog and got the upgrade now I'm able to proceed through the rest of the game because I have the machine gun now I thought it was hard to aim the Uzi it's even harder to control the aiming on this machine gun it's pretty wild even when trying to lock on but I guess it does the job let's see what we have up here okay some machine gun ammo or a machine gun ammo upgrade nice I gotta admit I'm still thinking about those two little birdies that died I feel really bad I didn't save them I really would have liked to complete this level uh, 100% but I guess I can't have everything my way we have to go ahead and clear out these little beetles except these ones unlike the purple ones these ones are flying at me these ones are a little more feisty and it looks like that door right there has an enemy switch on it so the door isn't going to open until I clear out all of these enemies and the way that it's having me aim at all of these bugs right there is really weird you like lock on to them as a group and then you have to aim inside of that group almost like uh, throwing a pitch in an MLB game <laughs> anyhow we got them wiped out and there we go the door just opened or is opening slowly and what do we have in here oh no do not shoot any more birdies bro okay I saved both of them nice he almost got him though 
I'm surprised. I tried to kill him right away, but he didn't die. This is like a red ant, and it appears that he's able to take more damage than the blue ants. The blue ants died a lot faster. I'm glad I went and just swooped him up real quick, because if I kept on trying to shoot him, who knows, maybe you can shoot the birds, and I'd be super disappointed if I was the one that shot one of those birds. Oh, hell no, red ant. He just shot the third birdie down. Man, all I wanted to do was finish this level without having any more casualties. And what do you know, the freaking ant killed my hostage birdie. I'm about to go Rambo Tamarin on all of these ants. No one kills my birdies. You really gotta take a couple steps back when playing this game and realize that you're a little monkey with a Uzi shooting a bunch of insects that destroyed your town. For one, how are the insects bigger than the monkeys? What kind of world is this? I don't know, but I gotta admit it's pretty creative and I'm down with it. Anything that has any type of resemblance or relation to any old rare titles or rare developers, I'm down to try it out. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just throw this out there without trying to make the rest of this video a Banjo-Kazooie rant, but remaster Banjo-Kazooie. How is Spyro, Crash Bandicoot, all of these different classic characters getting full on remakes, not even remasters or ports, remakes, and Banjo-Kazooie has no love. I'm just gonna go ahead and end this rant here, but remaster Banjo-Kazooie or remake it, we really need it. It's going to be the best selling remake or remaster, hands down, just make it, bring it back, everybody wants it. Anyway, let's see, I feel like I need to find one more enemy, that door has one of those uh, enemy buttons on it where I have to clear out all of the enemies to open it. And there we go, he was hiding right there, I think that's the last enemy. Let's go see if the door opened up, oh maybe not, there we go. There was two of them hiding from me. Anyhow guys, that is the door to exit the first level, so I want to thank you for tuning in for the first level of Tamarin. As always, I appreciate you guys tuning in. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment and don't forget to like and subscribe.